and welcome back to Final Fantasy 16. This is episode 28. Last time we finished a whole bunch of side quests and today we are returning to the Ironworks for a Song of Hope. So we're going to continue with the main quest. We'll open up our beloved map over here. I'm just going to check any more side quests. I think we're good. Yes. Good little view of the place. Let's head to the ironworks established within a natural sea cavern situated near the outskirts of old canva the ironworks serves as a discreet berth for mid's greatest creation in we go hopefully we can get this baby flying and by flying i mean on the open seas because my dreams of an airship constantly get crushed We've just got boats. <laughs> Are we right, Clive? My dad had it all worked out. He'd be proud of you, Mid. His writings may have helped, but this achievement is all yours. <laughs> Can we catch them? The Ainayar is one of the largest, fastest vessels ever built. And it won't help she has the wind at her back. Any other ship would be hard-pressed to keep pace with her, let alone reel her in. But this isn't any other ship. This is the Enterprise! And the world's never seen anything like my dad's engine. It certainly hasn't. Clive, what do you know of Barnabas Tharm? Only what the bards sing. And he sailed to Ash from southern lands. That it was his mastery of the blade which won him the throne. And that his sword Odin sword can sever the very threads of creation. But don't lose any sleep over a last tilt. We'll do what we must to survive. What we must. The light! I thought this cove was meant to be hidden! Ugh. Mid! Company! The ring wraiths are showing up. Hold them off until the ship is ready! But hurry! Put it out, you fools! Put it out! Right. Nice crispy bacon. Everyone with me? Look at this classic lineup. You've got your, your four party members all in a row. Now they just need to make this a, a turn-based situation. <laughs> you have your turn-based party sitting there like this, and then they, they take their turns. Come on. <laughs> I hope they don't have a cave troll. Amazing. Akashic folk stuff. Behind me, Lord Ah, uh, I, I need my four. I need my whirlwind, guys. One struck fear into the heart of every man in the twins. Do I have everybody fighting with me right now, or I got Joshua here? I got Gav here. Where's Byron? Byron's fighting too? Yes, Byron's fighting as well. Let's go. He blends in. Look, he got a kill. Amazing. I need to stop accidentally tapping that ability. They're all fighting with me. Amazing. How are we doing, Mid? I 
thought you said that ship was fast. I love when Joshua is like, what do you know of Barnabas Tharm? And I'm like, uh, he, uh, he's currently enslaved to a, to a demon god he calls a uh, master and uh, makes him uh, transform into his mother for cuddles. I thought it was called Heartbreaker. Yeah! Look at this, com this fucking battle banter that's going on right now. Oh my god, they, they do have a cave troll. There's a large one coming in. Oh, oh, oh. Ah, I just pressed the dodge button, you bastard. Nice try. Precision block and raging fists block attack is just it's just so good. Like it just works so well together. Titan is immensely satisfying. That was easy enough. <laughs> You heard the captain. Oh. What? But I thought he was. It's got to be Ultima. Confounded. Then it is as I feared. Oh, okay. Sleipnir is no man. But the creation of Odin. Oh. Oh. That's why he was thought it was weird when he was looking at his corpse earlier. Okay. Oh my God! There's an army of sleepnears. Sorry, fundament. Have you no normal enemies? I thought it might have been like Ultima possessed or something, like because we know that Ultima can take on different forms. Of course we are. Right, Lord Rosfield. Like how he does for Barnabas and bedtime. The executioner. Or was it my eyes? All the same. Rolling his R on the word roll is amazing. You leave! We follow! Follow? Swimming, are you? We'll fly on the Phoenix. Follow me! Way anchor! Holy shit, an army of sleep nears. Engine's dead slow ahead! This is so ridiculous. We'll fly on Phoenix, don't worry. By mid some time. Oh my god, there's... Like, I get that they're weaker, which is fine, but oh my god, there's... There's too many to look at. Oh 
Look at that group finish. There you go. I think Titan might be my favorite icon to use just because of the... Just because of the blocking. Fuck it. Let's do the lot. I was expecting some dialogue from sleep near here, but nothing. We good? Nope. <laughs> We're not good. When will it end? Oh. Time, guy. An army of Slipnias. What do we do about that? It just keeps coming back. Oh, thank God. I'm like, yes, Byron. God, imagine if all of these sleep nears had the same moveset as the one that we fought in the boss battle. That would be a little bit different. <laughs> I guess the more that they are at one time, the weaker they are collectively. Byron can put up a goddamn fight, that's for sure. Jolly good, my boy. Big cinematic slow motion jump, Clive. <laughs> nice. Phoenix could have Phoenix could have flown us there. Enterprise escaped, <laughs> and it does the victory theme for that. That's funny. The Enterprise has escaped. That's pretty funny. Well, we could have let the ship get out there a little bit further and then we would have just uh, been able to uh, fly on the Phoenix, right? All of us could fit on the back. Joshua wouldn't mind. Now, mate! All right, engine full ahead! And hold on tight! Okay, mate, that's a bit loud in my ears. Full speed ahead while Clive's holding on with one hand. The Nullia Narrow. How are we going to get this bad boy to the hideaway? Oh, this is the Einhyar. Cool. Oh, shit. What do you want? That's quite a mess you've made. And wholly unnecessary. <sighs> you are my offering to Muthos. I would not see you damaged. I'll give you Jill back if you volunteer yourself to be the vessel. Switching between boats. <laughs> now back to your stations! Every bell spent treading water puts another league between us and the galleon. Massive open sea battle between the Ironhunyar and the Enterprise with an Odin fight. I don't suppose Mid has a spare engine. <laughs> <laughs> 
Since you rose from the grave, my fortunes have plummeted. Are you absolutely certain of this quest of yours, Clive? The foes you face are as terrible as they are numerous. Aye, and they'd have us live and die on their terms, which should answer your question. Ah. You have that same stubborn look as your father did when he set his mind to something. On the battlefield, I am but a single axe. A deadly one, mind, but a single one nonetheless. Yet what you require is a thousand, and I believe my old friend in Randalar can provide them. Take care, Clive. I have many more tales of your father's exploits to share. And I cannot very well do that if you're dead. Again. Good luck, Uncle. And may fair winds attend you. As for you, Joshua, take care. I shall do my best, Uncle. Farewell, my nephews. When next you see me, it shall be with an army at my back. <laughs> Cheerio! Cheerio! He's gonna be like Gandalf at Helm's Deep. He, he rides over the hill with his army. <laughs> he will save us. I'm so glad I'm so glad that we've got so much more of Byron than I thought we would like so not just a small role well we can't have him showing us up now can we we would never hear the end of it <laughs> he's had a lot more of a substantial role than I thought he would have and not complaining at all that's great <laughs> Oh, shit. So Dion ran away and he came right back to the twins. Of mercy. To witness hit the destruction that he caused. Empire no more. All this, it... What have I done? Is the medicine girl? Why is she everywhere? Medicine girl lived and she's still here. <laughs> Why? I don't get. I don't get it. There has to be a big reveal. She's the main villain of the game. Medicine girl is another pawn of Ultima confirmed. I just I, like. Why is she everywhere? It's just so funny. All right, we are in pursuit of the Enterprise in the Naldia Narrow. Blessed with mild currents and warm waters, the Narrow allows for swift travel to the Outer Dominion, Oriflam, and Stone here without having to circle through the dangerous Outer Seas. They're on their way back, but they want Clive to come through. There's nowhere else to go. Let us check it out. So Dion's gone back to the Twins, which is very interesting. Could have really used him on our side once he was properly healed. I love the design of this ship. I love the like the fallen pieces that are attached to it. Between here and Walud, but any ship heading north has to round Zemeckis and put through the narrow. Maintain our current bearing north northeast, and we'll catch the Black Galleon before she vanishes again. What's to prevent her from circling around Ash from the south? With these winds in those waters, it'd take him forever and a fortnight to reach Stone here. 
Mid knows what she's talking about, Clive. Better than any of us lot, anyway. I say we do as she tells... Sails on the horizon! She's ours! Do we have weaponry? Look alive, boys! Full ahead! And keep those furnaces fed! Aye, aye! Do you feel that, Jill? Yeah. All hands! Battle stations! Okay, ship battle time, dude. Let's see what this girl can do. Have we got any sea shanties? Where are the sea shanties? <laughs> okay. Oh, he's suited up, dude. Oh, it's time. And where one leads, so does the other follow. The bond of consciousness which joins them, condemning both to the same fate. Yet my every attempt to strike it from their hearts serves only to tighten its hold. Fascinating. Dude, the armor of the Dark Knight. Oh, that is so cool. But then, there is naught my blade cannot sever. Oh, fuck. Can we protect against that? Great Grigos Gash! Great Grigos Gash! <laughs> oh my god. One of us. Out of port! Heads down, you brutes! And brace for impact! This is amazing. Look at that water. This looks fantastic. Final Fantasy Black Flag. Let's go. with an Odin fight on the open sea. Oh, I'm not ready for the storm that he's gonna cause. It's now or never. I'll find her. We're gonna have resistance on this boat? Oh my God. We're, we're trading places. Oh, no, we're not. I thought he was like, you go on my ship and I'll go on yours. <clears throat> Dude, semi-prime Joshua looks so sick. Bloody hell. Stop it. Oh, wait, no. He did, I'm getting confused. He did go onto our ship. <laughs> so Joshua's gonna fight Odin on our ship and we're going to go find Jill. All right, I got it. I thought Joshua jumped over with me. There's just so much going on. I'm just so excited. Okay, so we got, we got some royal warriors to fight. We got our Final Fantasy Pirates of the Caribbean music playing right now. You lose. This is unbelievable. They're teasing us though. Odin is not out just yet. He's just suited up for battle. What a goddamn like suit as well. Just like Dark Knight. Amazing. Oh, I don't have that ability. Shit. Well, I'll do that instead. This person is spamming protect. Stop that. Okay. 
waiting for him to attack, but that's fine. Torgo can just bite his nuts. Oh, hello. Getting windy out here. that for a combo. Do the precision, uh, precision raging fists block, then deadly embrace, then gouge, then stagger. <laughs> Tear that ship apart. I'm coming for both of you. Dude's definitely around.
looks like we're going back down again, but on the other side. New ship to ship uh, combat. They're like radio battle stations, but I'm not seeing any cannons. I wanted like a side by side cannon fight, but that's okay. <laughs> that's not the focus. So dark down here. My leg! Come on! Get up! Oh damn. Oh shit, hello. How can I even realistically do this attack inside? <laughs> Attacks that would tear a ship apart. Farewell. Jill! You came. Get back. My wife. Clive, how did you? I'll explain later. Had. Can you walk? Out of here, I can. <laughs> Here we go. Stand still! <laughs> Phoenix. Are you not the dominant of fire? I see naught before me but a guttering flame. <laughs> That's such a fucking badass transformation! It's so subtle. I love that it's not like super fancy, it's just swirling darkness into my levitating horse. Give that horse some wings. He'd just be floating. I love that detail of like his Ultima wound on his chest like shows in the transformation because we saw that uh, last time in the twins too. Oh my god. Oh my god! Oh dude, the, w the wave, holy shit. Whoa! The walls. Okay, Moses. Clive, get out of there. <laughs> Holy shit. Um... Oh, what? Wow. He like has permanently parted the sea. What the fuck? I'd be panicking. I'd be like, when's the water gonna come back down? That's insane. You go on. I think so. We're going to be the Titanic soon enough. But to where?
What did you do to Joshua? The Phoenix? Oh, I expect he will survive. This consciousness in which you coil your feeble souls is grown thick with desperation. And thus has my master turned to my blade. The world will soon be painted in black. And all that live shall gather in death's autumn wake. Not if we remove the cause of this misery. Not if we destroy the last of the Mother Crystals and restore balance to the world. Come. Do you truly think it's so simple? The Blight is inevitable. Not even the Almighty might stop its endless march. Your efforts will avail us naught. Naught, that is, but suffering. You must embrace the truth, Mythos. Accept your place with the Lord. Keep it. As long as there's a chance, there's a choice. Ever led astray by your blind resolve. Dude, the water droplets in the hair is such a cool detail. Oh, I love his transformations. Now, it, it is, is time you learn the inevitability of your divine fate. However much it may hurt. <laughs> oh, man. Get as far away as you can. Clive, no. Trust me, Jill. <sighs> time to fight for my wife. Oh, my God. Okay. Immediately. It's time. Ooh. We don't have to do this. He's fast. Oh, but we do. If only to remind you of your duty. Oh, he's parrying me. Uh, Robo oh. kill. Rise, Luther. What is that? What the fuck? Yeah. In the short time since our last meeting, you have grown much. Hey, you just cancelled out my attack, you fuck. I fear my Final Lord Fantasy waterfowl dance. Final Fantasy Sekiro attack. Oh my god. This is Sword Saint as Shin right now. <laughs> He's parrying my blows. That's so sick. Oh my god. All of those moves, dude. A foolish notion fed to you by a foolish man. How dare you? You know naught of this world, nor of our place in it. If our fates were so easily rewritten, we would all be gods. I can't wait to deadly embrace you, fucker. I don't know what the fuck... Look at that thing. His attacks are just amazing. So anime, like the fucking attacking and then the sword blows, like going after. Oh my god, hang on. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, hold on. No. I have to press the attack. Wait, stop. Oh, that's not doing anywhere near enough. Oh god, no. Oh shit. Iron Flash. This is a problem. Oh sh! Oh my god! I'm not gonna be able to get it. Oh my god! This is the first time that we're not actually gonna be able to get the attack. That's better. Oh shit! You will assume the mantle you've been given. And thus is the light of hope severed!
Is this a scripted failure? You would yield so soon. Never. Life. Holy shit. <sighs> Do you not see? Your iron will weighs you down, dragging you ever further from your purpose. And what is my purpose? Mythos. Who are we? What are the dominance? The breath of the Creator still warm on our lips. We carry his light that we might guide the masses in his name. We are but mighty acts of God. We are more than that! You would be nothing without what he has granted you. The power we wield is his, and yet every time we draw upon it, it wears away at our very being. It breaks us, it unmakes us, that its immaculate aspect might reveal itself. The Icon. It is too much for even his chosen few. Apart from you, Mythos. You wield the might of many, yet your body does not answer for its avarice. What are you saying? What I am saying is that we dominance are a means to an end. We were created for you, that you might drink deep of our strength and thereby fulfill your divine purpose. Which is? To feed. As you would know, could you only look beyond the walls of your prison of self-regard. As long as you choose to ignore this, you shall never penetrate my defenses. Still, you may take solace in the fact that you are not alone in your plight. The chains of volition shackle all of mankind, but there is yet cause to rejoice. For the Lord in his mercy has taken pity on his flawed creations, and shall see them restored to their proper forms. And what exactly would that be? Why loyal servants to God? No. Manners, Lord Rossfield? They are men, like you and me. Albeit ones unburdened by the wills that drive our kind to madness. They are pure. They are... Divine. You mean to turn everyone Akashic? Not turn, Mythos. Turn back. For too long has mankind been led astray by their clamorous wills. It is time they return to a world of quiet equality, where they might once more know salvation. Salvation? and abandon everything we hold dear. We don't need your salvation. We'll save ourselves, and we'll do it on our own terms. Not yours, and not your gods. With every defiant expression of your will, the tighter the chains of consciousness become. But perhaps that fact may be put to use. Oh, <laughs> God. The faster it binds you to the remaining dominance, the stronger your hunger will become. Until it leads you back to the only answer there ever was. Mayhap not by the path my master intended, but back all the same. Okay, how are we getting out of here? Shiva, please, we need ice. I not far. I could freeze a path. You're in no fit state. 
Probably not, but I can try. We need ice, otherwise we're drowning. Clive has the wrong sword. I don't know why. Clive's got the Invictus sword for this cutscene instead of our actual uh, sword, which is so weird. Clive bested. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> yes, celebrate my defeat. That is perfect. I love so much that we had a scripted failure on the ultimate attack and Barnabas has kicked our butts twice now. I love that like we've had a cutscene where he kicks our butt. We have an actual fight where we get to see some moves and how he goes and he kicks our butt again. And it, it makes it great that we don't just fight him and it's just like easy. We just trample him by going, my friends are my power. We're actually just getting messed the hell up by him. And it's incredible. Uh, it is genuinely incredible. And it's such a Final Fantasy arena right there. The goddamn walls that have just been... Uh, the walls of the ocean just like stuck up there. And then as it com comes crashing down, Jill's about to get us drowned in an ice tunnel. It'd be nice if she could maybe freeze behind us as well. She's like, oh yeah, shit. Let me just seal that behind us so we don't have to run away from like <laughs> raging waters the whole time. But oh, we've got Clive, who's again having his uh, sinews severed. And then Jill, who's been like, uh, imprisoned and tortured ex uh, exhausting what's left of her power uh, I'm a bit worried um, in that regard for Jill's life I've no idea where the where the Enterprise is hopefully Joshua's okay but this this is just this presentation uh, is amazing getting our true purpose to feed and gather all the other dominants to become the perfect vessel for Ultima and then uh live in a beautiful Akashic world where everybody is a mindless beast. Yeah. No, thank you. The shadow coast of Western Ash. We're on the next continent, finally. I hope the others are safe. The Enterprise was clear of the gap when we fell. They made it, Joe. And they would have seen the ice. Where it led. We need only wait till dawn. Drying our wet clothes. This is the second time Barnabas has bested me. I'm powerless against him. Then maybe there really is nothing else for it but to give yourself to his master. Only you won't do that. The Clive I know would never do that. So you believe? But do you really know me? If what Barnabas said was true, then... I'm more monster than man. And each time I summon the flames from within... I burn away the things that make me who I am. Do you, though? Think of what you've used that power for. Of all the people you've saved. It doesn't matter how or by whom it was granted, only how you choose to use it. And you've chosen to use it for good, haven't you? So used it to kill. What if that's my purpose? What if it's all I'm good for? You're still that same boy I grew up with. Always so eager to save everyone around you. And yet always so alone. Because you failed to realize the one thing that needed saving most of all. 
You, Clive. You. You never once took the time to save yourself. Myself. I think I might be beyond saving. No one is beyond saving. Provided they want to be saved. You fight to survive. And you survive so that you may protect those you love. It's what you do. What you've always done. And I know you're not about to change. So I'm going to help you. To give you what you need to protect us all. Jill. Are you sure? If... If this is what you want, then... This really is the equivalent of a Final Fantasy sex scene right here. This burden. I'll give you the strength to bear it alone. But I'm not alone. These burdens I carry. My sins, my pain, my sorrow. I see now that they are all a part of me. And I promise you, Clive, that I will be there, no matter what you must become. I know. I never thought a smile could bring me so much joy. Oh my god. The teasing of that. Finally. <laughs> that was that was so long in the making. I was literally waiting for Clive to stand up and forget that he was supposed to end that with a kiss. Woo! Let's go, romance. That's my wife right there. That was that was literally a Final Fantasy sex scene. It doesn't get any sexier than that. 
the equivalent of him ab absorbing some of Shiva's power there? Oh my god. Amazing. That's some true love shit right there in that scene. That was magical. I've got my right sword on now. That's nice. Yeah, let's go. I wonder what Gav's got to say about this, my male wife. What of Barnabas? Do we pursue him? No. Our paths will cross again soon enough, whether we like it or not. Besides, there is something we must do first. Of course. Drake's spine. The last mother crystal. The Einherja is at the bottom of the sea. Walud won't dare move on storm without her. But they know we're coming now. We'll need a plan. And a damn good one at that. Then let's go home and find one. Ash will have to wait. And we finally make it to Ash and it's like, all right, let's christen these shores, baby, uh, with some true love and then we'll uh, head back home. What happens in Ash stays in Ash. Oh my dear Lord. Woo. That was a beautiful scene. Oh my God. We've been waiting so long. Like, I just loved the callback to Jill staring up at uh, the moon and uh, Mattia and like looking up at that and you see, you can call back to the scene when they were much, much younger doing the same thing. And then the scene where they were in the barn and Jill was like, let's kiss. And he just didn't even know because he's so oblivious, but we've been teased this whole game. Finally. <laughs> Oh, that is so good. Very happy. All right, let's go back to the hideaway. So now we've got Shiva's power. So now I have to juggle another goddamn um, icon with all of my others. I'm excited to see what Shiva's abilities will be like. And I love, 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 love that we got her abilities not out of like, like her being gravely injured, like with Sid or potentially losing her or something happening like that. But it was a moment of just pure love uh, and a promise. And oh my God, that is just classic Final Fantasy love story stuff. And it makes me so happy because Final Fantasy, when they do like these beautiful love stories across multiple games, they're just always so heart wrenching. And I also love that that was a uh, right on the nose, calm before the storm scene. Like we just, everything was just like that peaceful, the night before everything hits the fan type thing, you know? There's a moment like that in Final Fantasy VII as well. <laughs> and uh, this was a beautiful one. And it's the calm before the storm of Odin. Oh, it's just so, so well done. So well done. Mid says Odin split the sea in two. He did. She's always been partial to a tall tale. But there's tall, and then there's tall. I struggle to believe it myself. I see your uncle isn't with you. He stayed with the Enterprise. After our brush with the Einherja, she was in urgent need of repair. And my uncle knows a shipwright in Randalar. We're to join him there when we're ready to sail for Ash. You sure that's wise? Last I heard, the place was still overrun with a Kashyyyk. Show me a city where that isn't true. Ultima's plague is spreading. We're running out of time, aren't we? 
We've done our best to shore up the hideaway. But I doubt a few planks will stop what's coming. Still, we'll keep at it. Every little helps, I suppose. Let's hope so. Across the narrow. Okay. The power of ice. Clive has claimed a portion of the icon Shiva's essence. Attuning with Shiva not only changes the ele elemental aspect of Clive's magic spells, but also allows access to several new iconic abilities, such as Ice Age, which forcefully knocks back enemies great distances. Shiva's feet, not those feet, but a different feet, uh, Cold Snap can be used to swiftly move left, right, forward, or back to either dodge attacks or close in on an enemy. Ooh, let me get some cool cloth. I should visit Joshua. Assuming Tai will allow it. All right, we got a nice shard. Joshua is here. Side quest central once again. Welcome to the Patron's Whisper. This is our next tier of reputation. A clutch mine, 2,500 ability points, which we're almost there. That'll be good for Shiva. Ring of the Swift Shot and Genji Gloves the, 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 to sail Forbidden Seas and Fallen Enigma. God, this renown is going up so high. Best of luck out there, Sid. Um, more hunts as well. Oh, we, we're about to get busy. All right, first things first. Shiva has been channeled, if you know what I mean. There she is. One more remains. Okay, Diamond Dust, a winter storm that freezes enemies in place within a radius before dealing massive ice damage and knocking them back. Oh, that's stun damage, look at that. Uh, mesmerize, launch multiple shards of ice upon striking lighter enemies, draw them towards Clive, can be used in midair. Rhyme, summon a colossal ice crystal that deals continuous damage to all enemies that become trapped inside of it. Increases the duration, fires three shards behind Clive. Number of ice bars to two. And Ice Age, a river of icicles that greatly knocks back any enemies it strikes. Hold to increase potency. See, do you know what's really interesting is, um, oh no, never mind. That's fine. Um, extends precise execution window. Cool. Cold Snap. So, mastery increases the permafrost duration. So, attacking with circle while sliding can temporarily freeze enemies. Okay. Um, well then, we've got to play around with a new icon, don't we? Um, this is the hardest part. It's always the hardest part, because I'm like, there's just too many to juggle. Three abilities per icon. I'm telling you, it would be perfect. Um, I think I want to... I'm gonna have to do I'm gonna have to arrange for some refunds, but oh, I hate you. <laughs> Maybe what I might do is instead of having precision block, a uh, Titan block, I'm gonna ma master raging fists. So I can assign it to anything. Um and then I'm gonna put that on. I might end up making Garuda my my little thing here. So we've got Garuda with Deadly Embrace, Raging Fist, and Gouge. This is going to be my Stagger Meter Shredder icon. Uh, we're going to get rid of Titan uh, for Shiva. Um, so we're going to get used to that. And then in terms of abilities, we're going to refund some stuff. Um, so we could refund Judgment Bolt to get 10,000 ability points. Um, and that way I can try Diamond Dust out and I'll upgrade it. Um, and then what do I want? I, uh, let's, well, Master Cold Snap. And then I think I like Mesmerize over Ice Age and Rhyme. So we're going to upgrade that. And then... Diamond Dust and Mesmerize is what we're going for. Sounds good to me. So we've got Flames of Rebirth, which we love. We've got Heat Wave, which we love. I've got 
Diamond Dust, we've got Mesmerize, we've got Gouge and Raging Fist. So we've got two ultimates. Um, good parrying ability here with Raging Fists. Deadly Embrace, Gouge, Mesmerize, Heat Wave. I like that little arrangement there. Um, so I still have, oh, I guess we'll take this off. Um, do I have a, I have a Raging Fist's damage increase in here, don't I? And I also have 10% and cooldown time by 3.5 seconds. We'll do a 10% increase, how about that? Good stuff. I'm very excited to play around with a Shiva. You need anything, you just ask. We might not have your uncle's resources, but resourcefulness, we've got in spades. This better not be Blacksmith Blues 4. What is this? Oh my god, there's no way. There's a Blacksmith Blues 4. All right, this better result in Zoltan and uh, Blackthorn actually kissing and making up, because this is unbelievable. Heard the bad news then, did you? What bad news? About Dravosht. Blackthorn's old horn. With the forge and all that. Well, anyway. The mines just down the road from there are spewing out ether like no one's business. And the village? Safe from the flood for now, but they've got other problems. Akashic. Every creature in the area is either turned, or on the way to turning, apparently. Zoltan and the others are living on borrowed time. They need help, and quick. Dorish sent a few curse breakers to keep an eye on things, but there's only so much a couple of scouts can do. Except get eaten. If something ain't done soon, the old place will be overrun. Okay, we gotta help. I won't let that happen. Didn't think he would. Does Blackthorn know? I thought it might be better if he didn't. He'd only do something stupid. You reckon we should tell him? No. It's better this way. Yeah, well... I can't stand about knowing what's happening out mm. there, so I'm off. I'll see you in Dravosht. The Blacksmith Blues have now gone over to Zoltan the Blacksmith instead. It has evolved. I'm glad that it's not Blackthorn being sad this time. Um, we've definitely got more side quests out in the field. Oh my god. More things to do. Uh, new hunts. Uh, just the one. The man in black. Okay, secret. Lost Wing. The greater part of those black shields who spied on Lost Wing were taken by the Aether Flood. However, we have received reports that one yet survives, a zealot of their evil cause who persists, uh, persists in delivering any bearer who strays too close to his hiding place to a gruesome death. Alas, he has heretofore proved more than a match for the curse breakers sent to slay him. Lovely. We'll go to Lost Wing. And then it's just Farog <laughs> that's left. <laughs> um... Alright, Mid's Dungeon has a side quest, and we've got a side quest at our reading table. Oh my dear lord, so much to do! Then again, why settle for low-born chaff when we've honest-to-goodness royalty right here beneath our roof? If Prince Dion cannot see my love for him, then perhaps the Phoenix will. Her constant, like, dialogue updates to who she's in love with next, though? <laughs> oh my god. Joshua's taken by Yoche. God damn it. She sees everyone but me. That's right. She respects Jill too much. How was she? The Enterprise, I mean. Smooth sailing. With Canva in the hands of Akashic, we'll need to find another port. Preferably one as well hidden as the Ironworks. Sid, <laughs> just the man I was hoping to see. D d did you have a mo? Don't tell me. You need more bomb ash. Oh no, we still got plenty of that left. I'm working on bringing another one of the chief's designs to life. This time, it's a new smelter. It's got a reverberatory hood over the top for additional thermo amplification and a system of reciprocal recirculatory regenerators that, that, um... 
Let's just say it gets very blimmin' hot. A, a heck of a lot hotter than anything Blackthorn's got in his forge, that's for certain. Only mithril engines get hotter, and you can't chuck ore in one of them and get metal out the other end. <laughs> Trouble is, we won't be able to make out of any old rubbish, neither. We need the good stuff. And I hear you once helped Helena get her hands on exactly that. Any chance you could help me too? This dude's voice. If it's for the good of the hideaway, I'd be happy to. Oh, it is. I promise you. So, what exactly is this good stuff you need me to find? We've got a couple of examples here. Spherical echoes, we call them. More fallen materials. So this smelter is similar to the mithril engine in more ways than one. That's right. They're a bit like the thermal helms. Fallen ceramics deal with heat like nothing else, see? And what's more, they're directional. Transferring heat from the inside to the outside. But these things, they're all outside. If we line the hub with them, they'll reflect the heat right back into the furnace. We've collected as many as we can, and I know where we can get the rest. Trouble is, they're all watched over by their bigger, uglier cousins. So you want me to visit some ruins, destroy some echoes, and bring back the spheres they're guarding? That's it in a nutshell, yeah. We're only three short, mind. And we know exactly where they are. There's one up Amber Way, in that ruin that they call Lost Plume, and another in the Silent South, over in Dalmechia. Last one is in the ruins of Advent, which is in the Empire. All right, then. Wish me luck. Will do. I'll be keeping all my fingers and toes crossed. I'll be keeping all my fingers and toes crossed. Okay, best part about this is every time we kill a bomb enemy, that is what falls to the ground, right? That orb before it disintegrates. And it just makes so much sense. And I love how this game implements an existing monster from Final Fantasy. Very old, very classic. We love bombs. And it allows them to exist in this world based on what they've created for this specific game. Like the fallen technology and stuff like that. And they're like, let's bring in a classic enemy, but like show how they exist if you're observant and looking for that. Like the, the heat that is reflected outwards creates the bombs of these little uh, these little things. That's That's so cool. Instead of them just being like, uh, they they just go, look guys, it's the bomb and they're in the game and they're here. I like that there's an actual connection to how they can exist. Can't say I've ever been to the silent side myself. Nor Advent, for that matter. <laughs> I've hardly ever been out of the duchy, to tell you the truth. Did get the chance to visit Lost Plume once, though. What a piece of work that place is. Would have stuck around to study the relics more. If half of them haven't been trying to blimmin' kill me. <laughs> nice, alright. Canva in the hands of a so, searching for spherical echoes. Um, and we're gonna go read our missive. Looks like we've also got new stuff with Blackthorn. Yep. Yeah. The blighted thing float, did it? The weight of all that shit. Mid had me knock out. I thought it'd sink straight to the bottom. Always the way with Mid's inventions though, isn't it? You ain't got a clue what the hell you're looking at when she hands you the designs, but they always seem to work. Clever girl, that one. A right boil on the arse sometimes, but clever all the same. So, what'd it be? Ooh, the ice brand. So that's what the ice shard that we got from uh, Shiva with our bright burn. Yet deep was Frost's bite, leaving her fell mark upon their skins. All right, we're moving up in the world once again for a five increase. Not bad, if I do say so myself. Um, not able to make these Uroboros pieces yet. And? Because we've got items to hunt down. Oh! Oh, what is it? Be careful out there. Ooh, uh. 
All right, goots. Uh, let's head into our room to read our latest missives. My Lord Marquis, I... I heard about Eastpool, that some of my fellow guardians are to build a new home there, both for themselves and for Madame Martha's bearers. Is it true? It's true. The village is to be rebuilt. I have many fond memories of Eastpool. When I was a child, we would visit my aunt and uncle often. They would lavish attention upon me as if I were the son they never had. I went to see Aunt Hannah after my uncle passed away, but... Not nearly as often as I should have. Oscar, I'd like you to assist Sir Wade in the rebuilding efforts. But... But, my lord, uh, my training is not yet complete. I, I couldn't possibly. I warned you I might not be the easiest of masters, but I'm not as hard-hearted as that. Go. Be with your aunt. Rebuild her home. It's what she would have wanted. Yes, my lord. Thank you, my lord. It was kind of interesting, because when we re built or like when we reclaimed uh Eastpool we like have him like help out and then they never sent word to him because I guess I had to tell him myself I will not forget this kindness my lord I shall go to Eastpool but as soon as the rebuilding work is complete I promise to return Clive is like hell yes I've gotten rid of him let's have a look starting over Clive, I cannot begin to thank you for all you've done for Lost Wing. So, in lieu of any awkward... Hmm. Words. Awkward... Remerciments? Remerciments? God, I just... I love ye old English. Remerciments? I shall be sending several barrels of next season's vintage. I can only hope they finally turn you off that foamy swill of your, you and yours so covet. A healer's place. Thank you for helping me guide my mentor free from his mortal coil. Contrary to what the madding crowd believes, we physicers are not without our limits. I cannot hope to cure every ill, mend every wound, save every life. The only medicine that will see you home safe without fail is prevention. Not that this knowledge will ever stop any of you from chasing down some behemoth for its toenails. <laughs> Captain Doris. Sir, I and the other curse breakers have grown concerned regarding the well-being of our captain. Despite the apparent unrest her recent investigations have visited upon her, Lady Doris refuses all offers of assistance. If it is not too much trouble, I would ask that you please speak with the captain and learn what troubles her so deeply. Look at that signature. Um, we haven't spoken to Doris in a long time since the, the last time we did a Curse Breaker related side quest, so we'll be checking in with her. There's no way of knowing if Doris will confide in me, but I can speak to her at least. Self-determination. All right, done. Uh, that's everything to do here in terms of picking up side quests. Uh, we're going to check in with Tomes and then we'll talk with Doris in the mess. And then we can go see what other side quests are out in the wild as well. We all know that bearers have a resilience to the ill effects of ether. But don't you find it strange that there are those who, despite being free of magic's burden, can seemingly pass through a flood without consequence? I asked our Lordsman how this could be, and he suggested that it might have something to do with bloodlines. Many of the realm's dominants are born to specific families, you see. The Rasfields, the Lesages, so, there must be something in those families' blood that provides them with the potential to become vessels for icons. But what about the ones who don't awaken? Could it be that this same potential provides them with something of the same immunity? Your uncle's recent travels with you across the ether-ravaged countryside would certainly suggest so. And yet, what about Gav? Well, in smaller, more isolated populations, bloodlines are less diluted. Hence, Shiva's dominance sometimes awakening in the child of a common northerner. 
and our scouts not having turned a hundred times over. Hmm. What are they alluding to with Gav there? Gav's a, a secret dominant, guys. He's a secret dominant. Sid, did you know that chocobos are far more resilient to the effects of ether than most other beasts? Some say that's one of the reasons they were tamed for use as mounts and sumpters, so that an ether flood wouldn't mean instant death for their riders or drivers. Me, I reckon they built it up over generations. Too many foolish traders driving their birds into floods, and only the toughest surviving. I think you said that last time. Good morrow to you, my friend. I have compiled some new entries, if you would like to see them. Update the tomb, sir. Living library! Is a fascinating excerpt I've been meaning to show you. Uh, these all look like I can read them. So for some reason on level five, there's one that we can't read, which is pretty funny. Um, but then we can read the ones that we get after that. I doubt, okay, these look all, these, these all look pretty safe. I haven't received any warnings about anything past level five. So the Southwestern Alliance and on, on Dente formed between Dalmichia and the Duchy of Rosaria in the year 850, with the aim of preventing the free cities of Canva from claiming independence from the Republic. While the Alliance eventually became a three-way affair, when Sembrek joined, bonds between the Dalmex and the Rosarians remained particularly strong with Rosaria sharing the secrets of vital techniques such as irrigation and the free flow of various diplomats between the two nations. Zemeckis is a mother crystal that is believed to have stood... Oh. Zemeckis is a mother crystal that is believed to have stood in an area in the northeastern part of Dalmachia. Legends tell that it was destroyed in a battle between men and gods a battle so ferocious that it left behind the great crater that can be seen today. Oh my god, okay. That's so close to the twins though, that's really interesting. So, giant crater. That area that we see, there was a mother crystal there. But it was not called Drake's anything. Zemeckis, interesting. Battle was so ferocious it left behind the great crater. Another mother crystal means another dominant, right? Because there's a mother crystal for each dominant. Yes? No. No. Yes? Maybe. The big bank of uh, Gilbard the Great Lender. A folk religion popular in the free cities of Canva. Gilbard the Golden was a legendary trader who not only introduced the concept of fiat currency to Valisthea, but founded Canva's very first merchant's guild. When that same guild was later entrusted with administering Valisthea's common currency, they chose the name Gil in honor of their revered founding father. The faith is organized largely along the lines of a commercial organization, and prayers tend to be aimed at bringing prosperity and success in business. The Tri-Unity of 859 is a tripartite, tripartite alliance formed in the year 859 between Rosaria, Dalmichia, and Senbrek. Its purpose was to oppose the independence of the free cities of Canva due to fears that this might inspire similar independence movements elsewhere in the realm. The alliance was disbanded in 860 in light of the attack on Phoenix Gate and the dispute over Senbrekois culpability in the affair. And Magitek is a term that appears in early histories of the fallen civilization and describes their highly advanced magical technology, of which the airship is best known example. They also produced weapons all but indistinguishable from living beings, yet whose destructive power rivaled that of the gods of legend. The early chroniclers labeled these beasts as iconoclasts, and it is from this term that the icons of the present day take their moniker. Interesting. Magitech. If you have a question for me, I should be happy to answer it. Well, I do have updates. Okay. After Clive was bested by Barnabas in the bed of the Naldia Narrow, the two fled to the Shadow Coast. It was there that she entrusted her icon to him that he might have the strength to fight their fate to the last. They shared more than that. Sleep near Habad. 
Despite apparently falling to Clive Rosfield's blade outside the Canvarian Agora, he appeared again in the ironworks, conjuring countless doubles of himself that set upon Clive and his allies, proving Joshua's theory that the constant knight was no mere swordsman, but a magical creation of King Barnabas. He created himself um, a, a twink dragoon. Amazing Barnabas. Taya. She learned much of her knowledge of non-magical interventions in the Southern Isles, where she served as a branded healer. With her magic next to useless in the Blighted Land, a man she called her mentor taught her the true Physica's art. Fate brought the two together again in her mentor's final hours. Long past healing, it was all Taya could do to use the skills he had taught her to ease his passing. Blackthorn, resident blacksmith of Clive's hideaway. He originally hails from Javocht in the far-flung desert wastes of Dalmachia, where he and Zoltan both pre uh, apprenticed. Though he has not returned for many a year, not least because his former friend still bears him a deep-seated grudge. Rodrigue, Taya's youthful and inexperienced assistant, a caring yet timid soul, he is committed to saving the lives of his patients and so quails when asked to perform life-threatening treatments such as the removal of bearer brands or the uh, administration of the potent Tears of Alicia. While he admires Taya's indefat- wow, indefatagability, he fears for its effect on her health and is shamed that he cannot yet do enough to relieve her burden. I guess that's her ability to not get fatigued. Indefatigability. Wow. Wow. Is that a real word? Did Final Fantasy just make up a word in? Wow, that's a real word. That is a real word. It's the noun form of indefatigable. A person or their efforts persisting tirelessly. Just say that they're like, you know, relentless or something. Say that they're just persistent. Oh my lord. This is why we just, let's just max, let's limit words to a five character limit, shall we? Let's be a five character limit society. That'd be much easier. Minute old Telemann. Daughter of Sid, raised in the hideaway, Mid learned all she could of engineering and invention from her father before leaving for university to learn all she couldn't. Her studies all but complete, she put her skills and knowledge to use in building the Enterprise, a mithril engine powered, powered vessel of her and her father's design, which she captains in service of Clive's cause. Nigel is the hideaway's resident botanist whose research into the medicinal properties of the flora of the twins and how one might grow about, go about growing specimens of interest in the middle of a blighted lake is invaluable to Clive's cause. Winton is the inscrutable landlord of Lost Wings Tavern. Though he succeeded in taking his revenge against the Lord Chief Justice who put his family to the sword, he was left bereft after the greater number of his loyal comrades lost their lives in the process and Lost Wing was swallowed by an aether flood. However, with the support of his surviving Lost Wing family, he swore to see the town rebuilt. And Martha is landlady of the Golden Stables, the tavern at the heart of Martha's Rest. The village became overcrowded after an aether flood in the Lazarus Drove, the Guardians of the Flame, and the bearers they had rescued from the Black Shield's raids to seek shelter there. To make space, she worked with Clive and Wade to resettle them in Eastpool, where she has been supporting them ever since. Zoltan is the feared and respected chief of the smithing town of Dravocht, where he and Blackthorn learned their craft. After the master, who the two apprenticed under breathed his last, they came to blows over the future of the town and have exchanged nary a word since. And uh, Oscar. Um, however, after the Guardians of the Flame took back East Pool, Clive bade Oscar return to the village where his aunt Hannah is buried and lend his strength to the restoration efforts. Uh, Wade. After Clive assisted him and his fellow Guardians, he went to East Pool. Uh, basically sums that up. He went to East Pole. Uh, to whom kings kneel? All right, let's have a look at this. Um, the otherworldly being behind much of the tragedy and turmoil that has plagued Valisthea and the creature King Barnabas of Walud worships as his god. Ultima requires a vessel in which to inculca inculcate his disembodied soul and Clive's curious ability to absorb the powers of other icons suggests that he is the very mythos that Ultima has long awaited. He wills Clive to absorb the other icons that his vessel might be perfected. Okay, so Ultima 
rocking a disembodied soul. There you go. We're missing one that looks like it'll be an important one. I don't know. There's like important characters around here. There's one here, one there, two there, two there. We're almost filled up with the characters list. Almost. After their base in the Lazarus district was lost to an Aether flood, uh, they went to East Pool. The Lazarus district. After the Empire moved its capital to the Crystalline Dominion, the once Grand District was soon overrun by what appeared to many as thieves and cutthroats, but were in fact a band of ducal revolutionaries known as the Guardians of the Flame. Their occupation came to an abrupt end at the hand of an Aether Flood. East Pool. It was deserted after the culling ordered by Empress Annabella, with bandits eventually moving in to occupy the ruins. The bandits were eventually driven from the ruins and the hamlet claimed by a group of freed bearers and Sir Wade's Guardians of the Flame, who had but recently lost the Lazarus District, water sold her to an Aether Flood. Just in case you didn't know, Port Lazarus was lost to an Aether Flood. The Black Shields were tasked with purging the impurities from the province, to which they, to which end they conducted cullings of both bearers and those judged to be ducal loyalists. After Annabella died and the Black Shields were left without a leader, many returned to San Breck, entering the service of the former Lord Chief Justice and keeping watch on Lost Wing. Um, Lost Wing. At one time, this small village in central San Breck boasted a thriving winery with the Gotland Rogue, Gotland Rouge, sorry, being produced uh, there, being prized by connoisseurs across the land. Alas, all the years of hard work were brought crashing down in an instant when the Black Shields, sent by the Lord Chief Justice of Sambrek, turned a Kashuk, sowing death and destruction in their wake. However, before those few villagers who survived the assault could rebuild, an Aether Flood descended, forcing them to take refuge in the vineyards to the east. There, Ilderman Quinton seeks to start a new village with his family. Kajlok is an old abandoned village built in the banks of Serdra's Thread in the Dalmakian Republic. Kajlok long served as a depot for crystals ferried up and down the river, but frequent attacks on the slow-moving transports by bandits prompted the Republic to establish new caravan trails for fleet-footed chocobo trap courses, essentially rendering the village obsolete. Soon after the final inhabitants departed, wild beasts moved in. However, there is an effort currently underway by Eloise and her crimson caravans to rebuild the town and provide it as a safe haven for displaced bearers. Dravocht is a town located in the rugged, mountainous mining region of central Dalmachia. It is known for its ironwork and armor and weaponry forged here has long over enjoyed a reputation as the realm's finest. This is in no small part due to the quality of ore the mines produce, as well as the veritable army of local blacksmiths whose skills are said to be unrivaled. The shadow coasts, uh, the forbidding cliffs that lie in the Naldia Narrow on the ash side of the channel, though viable ascents exist, their numbers are few and the paths narrow and perilous. That said, they have more than once been used as a staging ground for covert incursions into the kingdom. Now the land above having been all but consumed by the blight, it is only the boldest of adventurers who dares set foot here. And the Naldia Narrow is a region of sea south of the Strait of Altha, lying between the continents of Storm and Ash. The trading ports of the free cities of Canva dot its western shores, making it the busiest stretch of commercial water in all of Alisthea. Though her currents are swift, storm-free skies and an abundance of marine life allows for the Narrow to serve as the source of much of the region's food. And the Southern Isles, a nation once based on an archipelago in the seas to the south of Alisthea. It maintained a healthy trading relationship with Dalmachia and the free cities of Canva, where its medicines, which employed pl plants found only on its islands, were particularly prized. Unfortunately, the gradual incursion of the Blight destabilized and eventually destroyed this society entirely. So I wonder if like the Southern Isles and the greater continent, everything outside of the Twins has all succumbed to the Blight or whether there's a promised land somewhere that's just unaffected. Where's the medicine girl from, guys? What do you reckon? <laughs> um, yeah, avoiding those. Icon, a shattered aspects of Ultima's power given flesh by human hosts. It is the two Wardens of Fire Phoenix and Afrit, who together comprise his perfect form. 
the icons of the lesser elements serving as sacrifices to Mythos's altar in order to test and bolster the vessel's strength. So it is a win two become one situation. Phoenix and Efreet comprise the perfect form. That's the winged Efreet Risen uh, that we see on that banner. That's cool. Very cool indeed. Kashik. Though most regard men who turn a Kashik as naught but mindless monsters, Barnabas and Slipnir claim that they are, in fact, divine. And the Ihenyar is the flagship of the Waluda Navy, also known as the Black Galleon. It's a vast, seven masted vessel constructed of three conjoined galleys and could aptly be described as a floating fortress. Alongside the Royal Cavalry, it is the pride of Walud and is capable of swiftly delivering elite troops onto enemy soil to make war in the name of the mighty Odin. Jill was kept prisoner here after being captured by King Barnabas. I gotta talk about the Iron and Yar. Bit of a letdown. Not the spectacle of Odin and our team, and because that was cool, he literally split the ocean in two. Like, that's cool. The Iron and Yar in general, very disappointing for its reputation. Every it was not that well guarded it didn't have many people on it at all maybe they just decided to um maybe they just decided to not have many people on for the way home considering they had like a big fighting force um uh, going to um canva um i guess you could bolster your your forces with uh with slip near <laughs> if you wanted to it could be full, filled with him um, but it was just a little bit strange. Um, all the deckhands were just like, um, all the deckhands were just like, oh, oh my God, like, I was so scared to be here. And it, it just didn't feel, it felt like any other old boat, you know, didn't feel like anything fantastic. I would have loved like maybe like a ship to ship battle with like magical cannons or some shit. I don't know. Uh, it just felt like they'd built up this, this ship to be super, super impressive. And it was just like, just another battleground. And then it just fell to the bottom of the ocean. So I reckon the Iron Hen Yard could have been a little bit more uh, impressive. They'd, they'd really gassed it up. They were like, this thing's the best thing ever. Um, and then we just fought some enemies on it. And then Odin looked impressive. The Enterprise. Mid... Uh, let me have a look. Uh, it's okay. Constructed in secret in the ironworks on the outskirts of Canva, the mithril in which it is fueled is a highly concentrated source of energy, allowing the ship to achieve speeds thrice that of a galleon at full mast. Plus, our ship looks cooler. The Orchestron, it was designed and constructed by a young mid, and Sid labelled it her first true masterpiece of engineering. He hid his own masterpiece inside it, the final part that his daughter would need to complete the calibration of the mithril engines that the two designed together. Botany in the Deadlands. The Deadlands are true to their name in that no plant nor animal can survive for long in lands swallowed by the blight. At least that is without effort and ingenuity. In Sid's hide hideaway, Bohomil and Martell found some success in growing crops in deadland soil, and others continue their legacy in the new hideaway. Mid's filters, for instance, make the blackened waters of the mere fit for human consumption, and much to Nigel's relief, irrigation. Mythos, another one, the vessel's completion, Ultima's name for the vessel of limitless power that he has long awaited. He identifies Clive as this Mythos by virtue of his awakenings as the dominant of Afrit and having the power to absorb the ether of other icons. Ultima manipulates his service servants into pitting Clive against the other dominants that he might drink of their strength and bring Mythos closer to perfection. Primogenesis. All to sap the wills of mankind and make all of humanity into his soulless servants is the short little update for that. The will. That which separates humans from animals and is given shape by consciousness, a sense of self and a freedom of thought. Even when one is deprived of other freedoms, it is one's will that drives the pursuit of true liberty. To Ultima, however, human will is a sickness that prevents them from taking their proper divine form that of the Akashic who blindly serve his own purposes. 
To this end, he casts Primogenesis, transforming much of humanity into his soulless servants. In the bonds of consciousness, the fellow feeling that binds a person with those they love and who love them. So long as these bonds remain strong, so too does a human's grip upon their will. Ultima cast Primogenesis in order to sever these bonds of consciousness, that humanity might lose their wills and turn Akashic, and that his vessel might be perfected. Too bad. Jill and Clive have true love, and you can't beat that, baby. Long before the fall of the Fallen, there existed a tribe in Northwestern Storm known as the Motes of Ice, among whom the Dominant of Shiva would be born. Tales of the Ice Queens of the Old North are passed down among the men and women of the Northlands to this day. Ain't nobody living out in the North right now. Okay. You are always welcome, Clive. A law catcher. Makes it I can ride the end. So the only ones that we're missing is again those two that I we're just gonna just avoid them. And then we'll, we'll read them when everything's said and done, I suppose. And then we can reflect upon their meaning and see what uh, see what we have to say. And Yote is sad that Joshua is sleeping. He's the phoenix. He'll be fine. Where are you? Can I help you, Sid? I'm looking for Doris. Is she here? I'm afraid not. She's at Martha's rest on a job. My job, actually. When she heard what the mission was, she insisted on going herself. Alone. Did she? What was the mission? Following up on some new information. Once they'd settled in, the bearers you helped liberate in the Dragon's Airy were keen to talk about their imprisonment. And about their captor. The slaver Cole's team were tracking when they were attacked by the Beastmen. I'll go and find her. She's at Martha's rest, you say? If she's not moved on already, yes. I hope everything's all right. I hope With everything's Doris, all right. Alone. Maybe Cole was right to be worried. Back to Martha's rest then, innit? Clive! Anything catch your eye? Under new management. Interesting. So that's the, the veil. I wonder what's going on over there in Northreach. Rekindling the flame to. Trading places to. And duty undying. And lines in the sand. We've got quite a few side quests to do. Always something in there. Yes, exactly. Okay. Let's head out then. Um, we'll do self-determination. Oh, my, oh, oh my God, it's green. Look at all this green. You'd think that the blight doesn't exist. The lands are so green with side quests. Okay. They're throwing it at us. They're like, hey guys, haha. <laughs> The game just got real. You just had your first sex scene. That means you're old enough to do side quests. And they're giving it to us. Oh, it should be somewhere nearby. Assuming she's still here. Doris! Doris! She's actually uh, posing as a villager right now. She's I've gone got undercover. Just because the heavens have gone to record. Anything catch your eye? Thanks very much. Just a potion, please, lad. All right. Um, oh, it could be anywhere around here. Gotcha. It doesn't still hurt, does it? Oh, yeah, I forgot that there was oh, a brothel a here as well. Jaws couldn't hurt me. I'm a son of Rosaria, after all. A born survivor. Yeah, I forgot that there was also... There you are. I forgot that there was one here. It's been a pleasure, Doris. Just like old times. I'll give your offer some thought, my lady. What you do? How goes the investigation? Sid, what brings you to Martha's rest? You. I heard you were out here on your own, tracking our slaver. I trust you're being careful. Of course. And it had to be me. The bearers from the Dragon's Airy confirmed a long-held suspicion of mine that the slaver we've been tracking is an old acquaintance. She's no fool. 
If we'd come in force, she would have spotted us straight away, and then vanished without a trace. That was her just now, wasn't it? So, was it a fruitful reunion? I'd say so. She tried to recruit me. Seems her time in Rosaria is coming to an end. She's abducted bearers from across the region and is looking to smuggle them back into Sambrek. After her brush with those beastmen on the road to Northreach, she hired herself an Imperial escort. Which she wants me to join. She's dangerous, Sid, but I think I can stop her. Then I'm going with you. I'll take care of the escort. You can see the bearers to safety. Where are they? The Balm Arches, soon to break camp. You go on ahead. I'll follow once I've sent word back to the hideaway. All right. Journey to the Baum Arches. Hey, and we can search for some spheric liquors that way as well. Awesome. Let's go from the Old Hill Docks then, shall we? Chocobo. Good. They haven't broken camp yet. How did Doris come to know a slaver, I wonder? We've waited long enough. She's not coming. <laughs> Ready the bearers. We're leaving. Back to civilization, is it, Mom? With all haste. Lest any of you lackwits start talking like these feckless bumpkins. I presume your men are ready. We've suffered too many delays as it is. Any more, and I'll be docking your pay. Uh, yes, ma'am. Oh, but before you go, it appears we have company. Kill him. All right, time for a little bit more than your pay to get You're docked. To try. All right, Shiva time. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Cool. Mesmerize. Cool. Oh, that's so rude. All right. Prepare to get diamond dusted. Ready? Reload time, which is nice. To me, flames. Nice. Those abilities are pretty fun. Diamond dust, you'd expect to be very nice. So use like. <coughs> The what you ice them, pull them all in, diamond dust, smack them all around you. It's a great combo. So much for your escort. <laughs> You'll forgive me for not avenging my men. I'm not the swordswoman I used to be. I surrender. Do with me as you wish, Sid the Outlaw. Sid! Ah, Doris. I take it you're not here to rescue me from our brooding renegade? You know, I always wondered where you'd vanished to. But casting your lot with this criminal of all people. Better fighting for a cause than killing for coin. I'm sorry, Sid. I should have told you sooner. This woman... My former master once trained bearer children to be weapons in service of the highest bidder. 
She raised me like a daughter, and I did terrible things to earn her favor. It wasn't all terrible, surely. We had our fun, too. You were always so eager to learn, and had such clever hands. All my other children took either to the blade or to the books. Always either or. But you proved yourself a master of both. That's why I kept you for my own. How about it, my little dagger? Care to swear that blade to me again? I never swore my blade to you, nor will I ever. I fight for a higher cause, to liberate the bearers of this world. Farewell, master. Thank you for making me the weapon I am. You always were a righteous child. Perhaps that's the reason I loved you so. I'm gonna let the slave trader go. I am not the killer she wanted me to be. Not anymore. And she no longer has friends in high places. The dame does, though. Her connections at the Imperial Court will see that justice is done. All right. If you're certain. I am. And thank you. For everything. Now, I better let these bearers know that they're safe. Then I should head back to the hideaway and put Cole's mind at ease. All right, then. We we'll just let the slave trader go. Hopefully justice is done. That's fine. Five years later. Welcome back, Sid. Doris's message just arrived. I hear you saved more bearers from being smuggled across the border. With any luck, they'll be joining us in the hideaway shortly. Oh, and your letter. You don't need to worry about Doris anymore. I'd been hoping as much. She mentioned one or two things in her report. So the slaver we'd been chasing all these months was her former master. <laughs> Wish I'd known. She's been arrested, by the way, over in Sambrek. Went quietly, or so we're told. And she won't be getting off lightly. The Empire may have no love for bearers, but it's none too fond of black market traders either. Can't have been easy for Doris. I'm sure it wasn't. But don't worry. She'll be alright. I hope so. Suppose you should know, eh? You had quite the past yourself before you came here, or so I understand. Anyway, thanks again, Sid. The curse breakers would be lost without Doris. And you, of course. Keep up the good work, Cole. Nice. Quest completed. Self-determination. And, speaking of determination, we will be very much determined to get through all of these side quests, uh, but we will be doing that one next time, because there is a lot to do, so we'll have to commit another full episode to the side quests once again so soon before we can visit the infirmary. We'll give Joshua his much-needed rest, and then we'll get to the side quests. So thank you so much for joining me for this episode, and I will see you next time.